Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of those great strategy games. Today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, contrary to some media reports, uh, we will still be playing the Let's Play. So we are going to do the PBEM challenge against uh, one of the members of our community named Lodric. Uh, Lodric has actually already sent me the first file. I'll be putting that up uh, shortly to, so we can all see what happened at Pearl Harbor. I haven't watched it myself, so that'll be fun. Um, so we'll be watching that, uh, but I'm going to continue playing this Let's Play as well. As I always say, this is my favorite game in the world. I might as well play it uh, against the computer. I'll play it against humans. I'll play it against uh, alien species. I, you know, whatever. I'll just play the game because I enjoy it so much. And every time I play through it, I do learn something new. And hopefully you do as well. It's that kind of game. There's so many layers to this game uh, that you could be playing it all these years later. I played the original War in the Pacific in 2004. Uh, we're here, gosh, 17 years later. I mean, you know. My lord, there's kids graduating from uh, high school that were born the day I started playing this game. Uh, I'm going to keep playing it. I, I always learn something. I always enjoy it. Uh, anyway, we are on January 3rd, 1942. It is going to be one of those episodes where we do turn the turn. But before we do that, there are other things to be done. Now, last time we went down the U.S. West Coast, we looked around at Hawaii. Let's just kind of go down, I don't know, around Tahiti. Uh, let's see what's happening down at Tahiti. Now, we had put, um, I think this, gosh darn it, I can never remember if this French unit starts here or if we brought it over here. I could, gosh, I just can't remember. Well, no, very shortly. Well, we must have brought it over here because it's Tahiti 32. So we did bring it into Tahiti. I do always love to build a little base at Tahiti. That way, if you get pushed back too far here by the Japanese, you have a, kind of a lone outpost out here in what are called the Society Islands. Um, you know, other than Tahiti, I mean, there just aren't too many other places to put in over here. So, you know, Tahiti, uh, Rorotonga, that's a one and one. Okay, so Tahiti uh, could go up to a two. And indeed, we are building on this port, expanding, expanding, and building. That means we need lots and lots of supply. Uh, we've got 3404 here now. It would be nice to get some engineers in here. Now, unfortunately, the French engineers are very busy on Nomaya, or in and around Nomaya on New Caledonia. The, the, I think we actually sent them north up from Nomaya. Um, so, you know, we, we'd love to have some engineers out here. We'll build up this port more and it could be, uh, put, you know, a very important place. I've had games where Tahiti became <laughs> incredibly important. Now you never want it to go that way, but, uh, you just never know how the Japanese are going to expand out here. Uh, you do see this French transports, uh, or these French transports, I should say. No, I'm wrong. Now see those blues always trick me. That's a light blue for France dark blue for the kiwis those transports are going up to los angeles why is that well they're going to pick up troops uh, what else do transports do uh these are just kind of extra i mean what you know what are you going to do with all of uh this capacity uh the kiwis just don't have that much to move so might as well send them to los angeles help them pick up some u.s troops to bring back out into the pacific so that's what's going on there um, looking around, like I said, we do have this unit over on Rarotonga. Uh, it is a Kiwi unit. It's only got a six assault strength. Okay. It's just kind of hanging out here. It's got enough supply to probably get along for, <laughs> for a very long time. Uh, we do have other supply ships, uh, that would there. Well, there it is. Okay. We've got the Lorraine. Now this is a mission cargo. It's coming out here with some fuel to Tahiti. Now we set that up. Um, it's near Rarotonga, Rarotonga coming into Tahiti and it's a French cargo ship, the Lorraine. I think this maybe is our only French cargo ship. Is that right? Well, we've got to go and CS Tahiti out of Auckland. That's 
generally how I like to do it, is Auckland to Tahiti, then up to the U.S. West Coast. Um, you know, if you have to really take this big southern route or route, depending on how you like to say it. Uh, now, I said that was our only French cargo. I think I lied. We've got more. We've got more. There are, I, that's right. I forgot about these two. Uh, this is the Nicarada and the Tamara. They're also coming out of Auckland. They're going to Tahiti. We have them set as a CS, and we've got them on minimum refuel. They're actually bringing supplies. So the fuel ship will get there first. Supply ship gets there second. Uh, I had forgotten about these, and, you know, it's a very easy way to organize it in your mind. You've got the French ships going Auckland to Tahiti over and over and over. Uh, makes sense, right? Makes sense. All right, we've got more cargo. Well, these are tankers. Here come some big bad boy tankers full to the filled to the brim. 14,250 on the capacity here. This is 47, or 47. That doesn't look like a four. 57,000 tons of fuel coming in hot to Brisbane. Uh, we do have this kind of arcing up here, but we did the waypoints so that it comes down here and then up here. Now, we could, you know, really take this into Sydney. There's been a little more sub-activity at Sydney than there has been at Brisbane. You can see the reed is along for the ride here. Uh, it's going to have to maybe do some ASW work. Let's hope not. Let's hope that just goes in. Then you just see our conga line that moves out here, uh, out into the Pacific. Uh, these are actually coming from the U.S. West Coast for the most part. We've got cargo ships. We've got some transports, uh, more transports. We've got more transports. You can tell I'm very careful with those transports all the way down south around here. Hopefully, Lodrick doesn't see that and say, hey, I'm just going to send all my subs down there. Uh, it's hard for the Japanese logistically to stay down here very long. This path uh, you know, look, you gotta you gotta alter it as the game goes along. You don't want to just do the same thing over and over and over again with your transports, especially and your tankers, I should say. Uh, but this early in the game, this is this is the safest route to take them. You see the President Monroe, the Henry S. Grove. They're now we've got them on do not refuel. They're going to Luganville with 2nd Marine. Boy, that's a dangerous mission right now, but we're going to do it. Here comes 2nd Marine. Um, I wonder, yeah, do we have them refueling in Auckland? Tactical. Okay, we do. Okay, good job by me. Good job. All right. Uh, I pat myself on the back. We've got them refueling in Auckland. Uh, when we look at Auckland... What is going on in frickin' Auckland? Uh, we've got these level bombers running ASW out here. We've got two transport groups. Well, this is not really... Eh, can this... Yeah, it's got troop capacity and cargo capacity. I, I The reason I paused, it's it's uh, our merchant cruiser, uh, but this actually is real nice. It's got a, you know... Pretty nice capacity there. Uh, the Achilles is along with it, a light cruiser. Gives it a little AA. It's not really with it. It's just sitting here at Auckland um, to provide Auckland itself with some anti-aircraft. We do have uh, an American transport here, the Katoomba. Now, the Katoomba we send out here, we, we've taken some stuff up uh, to the little islands with the Katoomba. What else would we want to take? Well, I don't know. Let's go look. Is there anything else that we want to take uh, somewhere else? Um, okay, maybe not really. I mean, you know, you got to make sure you protect New Zealand. Now, am I expecting an invasion of New Zealand anytime soon? No. But you don't want to just say, I'm going to take everything and throw it up on these islands. Uh, for one thing, it's just not historically realistic. But, uh, you know, nothing here really ticketed for anything else. We have this unit out here that's sitting at uh, W Town, I'll call it, uh, just because I don't want to embarrass myself by actually saying the name. Oh, hell, let's just try it. What is it? Why Papa? Kari. Why Papa Kari? Obviously, that's how the locals say it. Uh, in Osborne, we actually have two motorized units. Well, I guess it's flat down here. Did I say Osborne? Gisborne! Gisborne! Uh, sorry, uh, Gisborne uh, born people. Uh, that's Gisborne, not Osborne. Uh, we've got a base force here. Okay, that's fine. Wellington. What's going on in Wellington? Uh, we've got a lot of units here. We actually have an American 
Is this American? No, it's oh, gosh, my color. What am I colorblind? Australian task force out here. This is doing a CS back and forth uh, out of Melbourne. Okay, excellent. So it's dropped off here. You can see 4,400 in supply, 5,600 in fuel. I guess I should have looked at that for Auckland. Just make sure we're getting enough out here. Yeah, we're getting more than enough uh, in and around Auckland. Uh, 28,000, 37,000. That all looks great. Uh, Wellington, again, let's go back here and just look at the forces at Wellington. We have them all at defend uh, target, 243. I mean, ultimately... You know, I have seen an invasion of New Zealand. It's not common. I'm not going to sit here and say it happens often, uh, but I have seen it. And really, Wellington becomes your main outpost because you bring U.S. units in here uh, because usually they're going to land to the north and try to take Auckland. Uh, and they're like, aha, we've captured New Zealand. Not quite, my friend. We still have Wellington and that will put up a fight. Uh, we've got a local mine sweep here. Looks like we've got a uh, U.S. Navy task force that came in here, dropped off. It's a CS for supplies. So that is already dropped off at Wellington and is now headed back to Sydney to get more. We've got it set as a CS. There's really not a whole lot to do down here. Uh, usually this is going to stay pretty static. Uh, as you get some more uh, Kiwi units from time to time, Maybe you take them up to uh, Nomaya. Maybe you now. This is what I was talking about at Comac. This is where we have that French unit. It's really the Kiwis go in at Suva or Nadi. Generally, generally, uh, they also are out at Tahiti. They can be up here at Savi. Uh, America is America is at Pago Pago. Okay, cool. Uh, so New, New Zealand's fine. I just wanted to go check on it. I like to check on these every once in a while. Looks like we did drop off the base force at Lord Howe. Uh, then we have... Well, shoot. Now, <laughs> did I not say to take these... Okay, we've got the Launston base force. And then over here, I've got the Queenston base force. Lord Howe Island. Let's see. I don't know why he's heading back. Um, Taruna. I know I did this last time, but why did I do it? He should be going to Norfolk. Um, gosh darn it. I just can't remember. Stanley's going to yell at me, uh, but I cannot remember why I had turned that around. Well, uh, Oh, he's not amphibious. We've got to turn him to amphibious. Uh, right. Uh, to get him on that island. That's why he's going back to Lord Howe. Um, well, now it's saying he will. Did I... Uh, I've got him on transport. He won't flip over to amphibious now. Gosh darn it. Uh, we got to bring him back into Lord Howe or back into one of the other bases, set him to Amphibious, and then have him go back out. Gosh darn it, that's why I did that. Okay, well, we'll come back and do that in a couple turns. Uh, we will not make that mistake against a human player. Um... That was a little sloppy on my end, but it happens. It happens in a game this big, believe me. The Piri, the Le Tres Font. Uh, that is a French ship. Uh, the Piri is an American ship, I do believe. Uh, it's the flagship. Yes, it is. It's a flagship. Uh, we've got the Madison, the Rochambeau, the Mildura, and the Murata all coming along to Los Angeles. All right, excellent. These are deadheading across back across the uh, Pacific to get to LA and go pick up as whatever we can. Um, we've got stuff coming in. Looks like a lot of this is coming into Sydney. Uh, that is the transport we just turned around. That's coming into Sydney. That's going out to Nomaya. That's going into Sydney. You know, this is what you want to see. ASW, let's get this sub. Come on. Uh, we can do it. We can do it. Uh, back in and through Nomaya. Uh, we got a lot of stuff out here, right? Now, we finally got the U.S. Base Force down here. Uh, we got the Field Artillery Regiment. Uh, we now have the 115th U.S. AAF. Uh, it's almost off. That's what this is, right? 115th. It's just continuing to unload. We've got the 
Gosh, here are more. I guess we do have more French. I hadn't thought about the French uh, cargo ships in a while. You know the Vichy is uh, French. Okay, that's fine. It's unloading here. It's on a CS out here to Nomaya. I'll take it. You know that. Uh, we're also on unloading out of Sydney here. This we don't have set as a CS. This is a tanker or two tankers, actually, along with the Voyager destroyer. Uh, they're going to put enough fuel in here. We probably will never have to worry about fuel at Nomaya again. We got uh, local sweep, and then we've got uh, the cruiser, Australia, sitting out here at Nomaya, just providing some anti-air to the extent we need it. Now, up at Colmac, um, we march these guys around a little bit, right? Um, because the U.S. base force has aviation support. These did not. So we don't really need aviation support at Comac. We do need it at Nomaya. And so we just switch places. Uh, that's how I like to do that. Strategic move. Um, well, I could put him down there or I could just leave this. Yeah, let's set this to Comac. All right, and we'll put that on combat. Uh, that's a 27. That's not a, you know, a nothing force. I think this New Zealand Pioneer Koi, this engineering, I want all the engineers down in Nomaya I can get. Um, so let's try to then, you know, I, these guys are just marching back and forth. They're like, what the hell is going on? Um, let's look at Comac really quickly. We're just expanding the airfield. That could get up to a seven, though. Uh, let's leave these engineers here for now. Do we have enough engineers at Nomaya? Let's look. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got eight. Um, we've got four vehicles. We've got 34 aviation support. Okay, uh, I think that's fine. Let's just leave this as is then. All right, so Afate, we put the base force in there. At Luganville, we've got that second Marine Division coming up here that you saw. That's a little risky, and the reason it's risky is Espirito Santo uh, and Luganville specifically can be blockaded by the Japanese, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So you got to make sure you get enough supply up here before... You know, you have too much up here. Now, we got a U.S. artillery, U.S. base force. We've also got, uh, yeah, this is dropping off the 114th. It will then go back to Brisbane. Um, we have the light cruiser Leander out here at Luganville. It's going to sit here for AA purposes. Now, another thing we can do is once we get this airfield built up a little bit, we could put some fighters out here. That really lessens his opportunity for actually blockading and or interdicting the port or getting things into the port because you can kind of chew him up a little bit with your air. Uh, let's go back through Naughty. Ooh, look at that makes a nice purple when you've got it out here to the, its maximum extent. That's uh, recon. We've got this uh, New Zealand battalion out here, 43 assault straight, and a New Zealand base force. And then in Suva, we've got, well, hold on. Let's go back to Naughty for just a second. Okay, no ship. I just want to make no sure no ships were in port. Uh, Suva, same thing. We've got a lot of stuff unloading here. We've now got 14,000 supplies, 17,000 fuel. I always make Suva the absolute center point guard of my defense out here uh, because, you know, it can build to a seven airfield. It could go all the way up to a level six port if you wanted to get crazy. I don't know if we'll get quite that crazy. Uh, we have New Zealand engineers out here, 12 of them and three vehicles, so they can actually build up fairly quickly. Uh, 16 on the aviation support on those guys. We do have a New Zealand battalion here, 48. We've got another New Zealand battalion, 48. That's nice. That's a nice defense here. Uh, what did we have come in? All of these American units. They're trying to unload. We've got base force. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't really unloaded yet. You can see they're all 199. They've just, you know, put a chit over here in Suva to say, okay, well, this is where we're unloading. But look at all this stuff. 34th Infantry, 46th. 34th uh, base forces. We've got all kinds of stuff in here, and that's how I always do it. Uh, don't tell Lodric. Uh, AKLs unloading CS Suva uh, out of Auckland. 
bringing supply. And then we have this out of Auckland uh, bringing fuel. Perfect, perfect. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up here in CS. Uh, ultimately, if you can hold Suva, uh, you're in pretty dang good shape out here in the Pacific, uh, South Pacific, I should really say. Uh, now, what is this? Uh, this is the Georgian going back to Auckland. I put it as Auckland, Auckland. Uh, we'll get that either going to Suva, no, my, just use Auckland uh, as much as you can. Sometimes I'll either bring it out of Sydney and just have Auckland be my main base. Now, you know, it's not as efficient going directly to Nomaya, but for the other places out here, uh, Suva, Pago, Tahiti, uh, a lot of times I'll just run those directly through um, Auckland. Um, okay, we've got, uh, what are these? What's this transport? The Monterey bringing the 205th field ar artillery. Okay, we've got it set ready for Brisbane. All right, we're bringing an American field artillery into Brisbane. Uh, excellent. Okay, the more defensive we can make Australia, the better. A really good human or a very aggressive AI uh, will be on Australia. I mean, you've got to watch out. Now, I know historically you don't really think, well, the Japanese, you know, didn't really try to invade Australia per se. In these kind of games, they have to. They have to. And ultimately, I think if you look back, uh, they probably needed to uh, to win the Pacific War. Now, they were probably never going to win the Pacific War because eventually the Americans would have just swamped them. That being said, if they had a chance, it would have been, I think, to take Australia because then the U.S. would have really had no operating base. I mean, you could operate out in New Zealand, but man, that would have been really limited for the U.S. Uh, not taking Australia or at least the major population centers. But then you ask the question, I mean, like how many men would Japan had to have had to use to garrison a place like Sydney? Uh, there's going to be crazy partisan activity, obviously. I mean, the Australians are going to go berserk if that happens. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting what if kind of questions. Uh, Suva. Okay, so we looked at that. I don't think we had any. Well, we don't have any ships in port. We know about it. We've got these task forces. They're all pretty much CSs. You see how we have that transport getting the hell out of here. Uh, Savi. Savi, we did bring up uh, this Kiwi unit. That's nice. What's going on at Pago? Pago, Pago. Let's go check it out. Uh, Strat. Seattle. Nope. That's not what we want. We want this to go combat. And let's go down here and we're going to tell it you're going to be in Pago, my friend. All right. Excellent. Oh, that reminds me. Anything that we have in Suva, let's just make sure that our land units uh, are probably, yeah, combat, defend it, target. Okay, we don't have a whole lot here yet, right? We got a 105, but man, oh man, we're gonna have a lot of stuff here uh, come the next few turns. So Pago's out here. We do have three ships in port. I think these are those support ships, and indeed they are the Sirius, the Regulus, uh, the Pelican. Uh, you know, why keep them out here? Really, they probably should just be in Pearl Harbor. Um, I don't really, you know, there's no reason to have these tender ships out here. I don't really feel. Uh, I like to have them all either in, you know, Sydney or Brisbane or at Pearl Harbor. I think I, uh, let's, uh, I keep going back and forth. All right, let's form it up. Uh, support done. Now, I know some of these I sent out here before. Now, the AVP could actually be halfway useful. Uh all right, let's take these two. We do not need these to be sitting here. Um, and let's send this back to Pearl Harbor. Uh, we're just eating up some oil. Look at all of this, at all this activity in and around Pearl Harbor. But uh, let's go ahead and send this back. Uh, we'll set its um, home at Pearl. And we also need to set waypoints. I, I don't know, really know what I was thinking when I sent them out here. I, I never do that. And with most of these, they're going to go along with invasions. I mean, for the most part, I'm just speaking generally here uh, of islands. Once we start island hopping, there's just no reason to have them here. Now, the AVP is different. 
Um, and let's go look at it for a second. The Pelican, that's an aircraft tender. So that could actually come in handy on an island uh, like Pago Pago. But here, nah, not really. It's the same with Suva. I, I'm not really sure why I sent some of this stuff out here. Uh, well, the destroyer could be helpful. The repair ship could potentially be helpful. Uh, aircraft tender, okay. I mean, you can make a better case for some of this. Uh, submarine tender, you've got uh, the ammunition replenishment. We don't really need that or the miscellaneous. I'll just keep this one here though because we're going to have Suva well, well protected or at least we should, or at least we should. Uh, did I have one of those over at Nomaya? I did not, at least I was smart enough not to put one together to put to Nomaya. Um, okay, let's go up here this time anyway. We'll look one more time at Rabal. Now we're trying to bring stuff into Rabal. This is gonna be, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Let's see if we can get in there. Can we take it in full speed for a turn? Eh, we're only four away. Uh, how much fuel do we have out here? I could do like a top off minimum refuel at Rabal. Do I have enough? I mean, that's a part of the reason I'm bringing this out here is to bring stuff to it. Um, yeah, this is all supply. We really don't need fuel though. We're not going to in any, I mean, we're not going to have any aircraft out here. Probably you can see he's sitting right off the coast here. Ooh, I didn't notice that before. This is probably his main tap. I don't know. That's an invasion force ship sighted two. Uh, okay. He's going to, our subs going to play with that. He's probably, hmm, we really do need to bring this in full speed then. Uh, cruise speed, full speed. Um, let's do this at a minimal refuel, just top it off if we can, uh, into Rabal. I guess we're not going to get this unit out there in time, or I don't know, that doesn't look very strong if it's only two transport ships. I don't know if he's just coming to bombard it and something bigger is coming behind it. Uh, I guess we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Um, we got the base force down here at Milne Bay. We'll turn that into a base, uh, Buna. What's going on, Buna? Wait a minute. Why was that showing? Oh, this ship. Oh, this is the mobile city. It's going around to Buna. Got it. Okay. Uh, we do not want that on full refuel. We don't even want it to refuel at all. It came out of Moresby. Uh, 4,900 on the supply to try to get Buna built up. And now we have over here at Buna, we've got these two Koi forces, I believe. B Koi, uh, A Koi, the end. Uh, NG rifles over here, infantry unit. They're not very strong. Uh, they will bulk up a little bit now that we've got them into Buna. We flew them across the mountains. That was fun. Uh, Moresby, looking good, looking good. Uh, no ships in port. That's all we care about. Uh, let's just make sure we've got everybody on combat here before I, yep, and that's why I looked. Oh, okay, these are the ones, we're, we've still got a little bit left to fly over. That's what I thought. They looked a little light to me. At Rabal, let's make sure that all looks good. Combat, defend at target. Okay, here they come. I believe, we'll see. Maybe that sub can take something out. That would be exciting. I mean, we're running a chance here, certainly, but let's go for it. Why not? You only live once. Uh, this unit's coming over to Lay. I wish I already had this in here. We actually are dropping off supply at Lay uh, before the units even get there. We will be ready for them. Um, next time, we'll probably go look around a little more in Australia. Darwin. Uh, we'll check out our situation up here at Surabaya and Batavia, especially now that his main task force has paraded through and moved on, it seems, at least for now. Now, they probably needed some fuel. They're going to go get it, and they'll come back, but that gives us a nice opportunity to take another look at all this. Malaya, obviously, we still have problems. Now, this unit seems to have moved beyond uh, or gotten out of here a little bit. There was a battle fought here, it retreated out. Um, up in China, we need to go look up there again, but this time let's go ahead and resolve the turn and, uh, see what happens. Let's do it. All right. Resolving end of the orders phase. Yes, please. All right. And off we go.
Now, when we flip this over, it will be January 4th, 1442, as we continue to scoot along. Before you know it, I tell you what, we'll all wake up one day, I'll be like, wow, we're in 1943. You'll say, 2043? No, 1943. I'm not really sure what I'm looking most forward to here. Uh, potentially, uh, what's going on in Malaya? We've got a lot of action around Clark Field now in the Philippines. That's heated up. I'm actually su surprised he hasn't landed in northern Borneo yet. Uh, what are these task forces doing? Is he going to land in Rabaul? we got a lot that could happen. Uh, we got... <laughs> Got a lot of subs in the action here. We probably should go check out all of our subs. I got a lot to do offline this time. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to go check out and, and look at and make sure that I've got set up just the way I want. So anyway, if you're a fan of this channel, and if you are, you're probably a fan of War in the Pacific. That's what started this channel. Uh, that PBEM challenge, I think, is going to be a lot of fun against Laudrick. He, I, I think, you know, he's got a real good grasp on the game. Uh, as I said, he's just sent me the first file. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to try to always just every single episode uh, show you the action from the previous episode. And then we'll talk about one specific spot on the map that I find interesting. I don't want those to turn into five or six hours episodes that's going to be more around an hour we'll watch the turn unfold that he sent back to us uh, a lot of the setup i mean i could do that if you guys want me to let let me know in the comments i'll show you as much as you want to see if you want to see every last thing i do that's fine or we can just kind of jump around the map uh, sort of how i do uh, these now that we're beyond the basic tutorial and all the setup and now i just kind of show you one section of the map each uh, episode uh, but for that i mean i hell i can record the whole dang thing i'm gonna be doing it whoa we've got troops on uh, tan joan what is that tan joan solar okay uh Again, that's how the locals say it. Um, okay, I'll stop saying that joke. Uh, okay, so they're landing here. Uh, invasion sport action off of Ternate. Defensive guns engage. Yes, the guns of Ternate. Two ghost coastal gun shots fired in the defense. Uh, they don't do a damn thing. Okay, too bad. Tarakin, they will, I promise. All right. Uh, wow. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Out here by Wake, uh, we got into a, a, what is a Japanese? Whoa. Well, he's taken Wake, duh. Uh, but he's trying to get a cargo ship into Wake Island here. The Triton says, uh, no, sir, except it shoots two torpedoes. Uh, the Mark 14 miss is, of course. Uh, so he will get that cargo ship in there. Now we're reacting to that sub, uh, or we were, off of Seattle. Uh, the Skipjack is into some. I love the Skipjack. Uh, we do hit the Hakuse Maru. Shell hits five. Excellent. Right off of Vigan. Or Vegan. Uh, maybe that's where the diet came from. No, that's with an E. Uh, shell hits five. Uh, they have 12 casualties. So evidently we really did get into it. Um... Low on gun. Shoot, the skipjack's low on gun ammo, so it breaks off. Uh, well, okay, we hit it. Who knows? I mean, we we may not have the recon. And there we go. Okay, uh, we tried to get that AK in there, and he sunk it. Well, gosh darn it. Um, I probably should have turned him around. Ew. So he's bringing the Natori, the Tenryu, the Nagatsuki. The Asaragi, okay? Uh, we had the Anshun, the Yu Chao, the Yunnan, all came in here. They're all on fire, all with heavy damage. The Swan is hit. Damn it. I was trying to sneak in there, and I didn't get there in time. Uh, and they're all going to sink. Um, unfortunately, dang it. Well, you know, 
It happens. Uh, you Sometimes you got to take chances and try to get cargo in there. Now, you know, we're trying to reinforce Rabal, but that really makes me think about sending that troop transport out there. Uh, we're going to have to see them pull back before we'll actually do that. Okay, five sallies in. It's a night air attack on Ilio. Uh, okay. And now they're attacking again. No losses. Ah, crud. All right. Well, we've lost some cargo ships. I think those were all five or six point ships. We'll yep. The Anshun sinks. The Yuchao sinks. The Swan sinks. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, okay. We had a commander killed as well. All right, here's the invasion of Tarnate. We try to shoot again uh, at some of his cargo ships this time. Uh, nothing doing. And now it is daytime. All right, we've got a lot of things landing. Hey, that's that uh, Marine group that we sent up to Midway. He's allowing us to keep Midway for now. Uh, we fired coastal guns at Tarnate again, but uh, no joy. Excellent. We finally did it. This little sub that's been out, I say little, I don't know how little it is, the SSI-175, uh, the Wyala finally got to it. Hits it four times, as you see here. Uh, we located it, um, then we failed to find it. Uh, we failed to find it. Well, we located it once, I'll tell you that, because it's uh, we got some depth charges in, dropped it, uh, heavy damage, four hits. That's awesome. Uh, the Swordfish is trying to hit some PBs out here off the home islands. That's probably going to send a little shiver up the spine of the Japanese islands. Uh, we've got subs right off the coast. Now we're trying to react to that sub. Um, sub attack near Rockhampton. Okay, he got the drop on the steward out here. Now the steward's doing ASW. We're trying to find him. He found us! Whoa, who's finding who? It's like that Spider-Man meme. You, 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 I don't know. SSY-173. Uh, DD Stewart. Uh, there was a lot of action out here, but no damage to anyone. Um, ASW attack. Okay, excellent. Maybe we'll scare him off here. The I-2 is out here. The AVD, the Casco. So we put this destroyer tender out here, uh, but he's doing ASW work, and he found him. Uh, maybe that'll scare him off a little bit. All right. Uh, now we're going to get all of our spotting, snoopings, and otherwise. Uh, we have things unloading. We have things spotting. This has been a very eventful turn so far. This has been a fun one. Um, Porta Princesa. Okay, I'm surprised he hasn't taken that yet. Uh, looks like he's. She's. Does he have aircraft off Pago Pago? I mean, a lot of this is just uh, hearsay, right? I mean, a lot of this is just rumors. So yeah, we think we saw something. I don't know. It's potentially a UFO, uh, but or maybe it was a Japanese plane. I don't know. That's how we're going to report it. Ooh, okay, uh, 16 Nels in on Palembang. Wow, he's already bombing Palembang. Very bold, I like it. Uh, we destroyed two Nels and damaged two. We took no losses other than we did take three runway hits. So we got the cap up. Uh, what did we get up? We've got some 339Ds here, two of them, four Hawks. Uh, he came in unescorted bombers. And we did uh, get some get some shots in there. Nice. Okay, here he comes, uh, 18 Bettys. We get the Flying Tigers up in the air at Pagu. Uh, we got 14 Flying Tigers up, three Blenheims. 
We did destroy one Betty, two damaged. Uh, he did hit the airbase and the runway, but nothing too severe. So that was a decent result for us. Now they're going to hit Langsa, so they are hitting across the Strait of Malacca. Uh, in some respects, it's kind of a waste. I think, you know, I mean, we don't have any air assets over here. He is going to just take out the runway to make sure we can't uh, bring any air assets up here. But okay, uh, he got two damaged planes out of the the transaction there. I I'm okay with that. Okay, now they're coming across the strait again to Madan. Uh, ten Oscars, seven Lilies. Uh, we did have a few casualties on the ground. Uh, you can see here, don't hurt our engineers, whatever you do. Uh, we had one non-combat personnel disabled. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, a lot of aircraft going to go back and land. Now the ship crews are performing damage control. Unfortunately, we had some to do, but most of it sunk, unfortunately. Um, air operations phase. We're observing yet again. Be interesting to see if he tries to come back in on Palembang. Uh, submarine. We already knew that submarine was out by Oosthaven. Uh, Babel Duav says there's some carriers out there. I think we knew that too. They were going back to uh, refuel, I think. Um, airstrikes. Formation approaching. Okay, they're going to attack Kukong. Uh, 37 zeros and 20 Bettys. Really strong force here. They're going to make sure we've got nowhere at Kukong. Uh, runway hits 59, airbase 15, airbase supply hits 14. Okay. Uh, they're going to try it again with 12 more Bettys. That's fine. Uh, they're really going to just completely incapacitate that uh, runway. That's fine. I mean, I don't think we're going to have any planes out there anyway. Uh, now they come after Kassan to make sure we don't have anything uh, that we can fly in the air there. The, the Chinese just don't have anything anyway. So some of this, they'd be better off, I think, bombing our troops. But that's okay. Uh, runway hits, airbase hits. Uh, they bring in Zeros and Nels again. These are, you know, fairly strong squads that they're bringing in here to bomb. Eight Kates. Uh, we had 50 casualties on the ground, so he did go after the 86 Chinese Corps there. Okay. Uh, now they're coming in at what's called Asiatic Fleet. It's the headquarters. They're trying to bomb our troops. Uh, two Lilies were damaged. Doesn't look like they hit anything on the ground. They came in at 13,000 feet. That's an interesting altitude. I always kind of like to see what the game does. 17,000 feet. Lily's in on the 65th Chinese again. Okay, he's disrupting us. That's what he's trying to do. That's what he was trying to do at Clark Field as well. Uh, now we're seeing other bombers here or there. They're again trying to... Hit. Well, I think we know where they're going to try to head with his, you know, some kind of attack. Uh, Nate's and Sonia's in. Okay. It's hitting you know all of these units here at Kukong. Uh, but I think that's going to be the centerpiece of their attack as they try to push north. Uh, I, why would I think that? Well, I don't know. They're bombing the hell out of our units there. Uh, formation approaching 73rd. So now they really are doing a lot of uh, unit bombing. Uh, eight Tojos, 15 Lilies. We did have some casualties on the ground. No Japanese losses. Now they're going to bomb Clark Field. Uh, they're all over that runway now. Uh, we don't have any planes left there, so, you know, feel free, hit the runway. Uh, you're just hitting your own runway eventually. Um, Subic Bay is getting hit, 10 and 12. No Japanese losses. I don't see any damage. 17,000 feet they came in. So they're coming in anywhere between 13,000 and 17,000 feet. Uh, now they're going to bomb Rabal. Okay, 20 Bettys. We have eight casualties on the ground. Aircraft attacking. Uh, 20 Bettys bombing from 7,000 feet. Okay, so they're coming in low and slow there um, on the Lark Battalion itself. So we are going to get a little bit disrupted from that. We aren't going to be able to get any troops up in there, I don't think. I think he's going to take Rabal. Unless uh, the Lark unit can hold him off, uh, we'll see. 
Now, in our human game, we'll go a little, we're going to do something a little special out there. Uh, for the AI, I let them take Rabal, especially, you know, essentially. This is what we've talked about before. <coughs> you kind of have to. So, um, am I going to do a mount a massive defense at Rabal against uh, our opponent? Well, I don't know. You know, the, I don't know where Lodric is going to go. What are we going to do? I don't know either. I don't want to tell him. No, I don't think he'll be watching those. Uh, we'll, I'll be putting those up while we're still early in the game. So, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but I'll show you quite a bit of what I'm going to do, or I'll show it all if you want it. Uh, ASW Attack, Newcastle, SSI 20. Okay, we had uh, the Wallengong is trying to scare him off, and this is why you bring escorts along. The Wallengong found him before he found us and tried to do some ASW. Uh, we abandon our search for the sub, hopefully, and he didn't get any torpedoes off <clears throat> against the cargo, so that's good. Uh, the Casco is all over the I-2 out here. I love it. Near Victoria, just off Seattle, Vancouver. Uh, we couldn't find him, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we're making him expend fuel, move around. Hopefully, it'll help us find him next turn. Uh, coastal guns fired at Ternate to no effect. They're not hitting anything. Usually they'll hit a little, they'll hit something, but they're not this time. Now we get into the land movement and uh, we're marching about in China, trying to <clears throat> get a little bit more back by um, Changsha. There in China, we've got some Indian units moving around the map here as we try to bring them down to where the first bit of action would probably be. we got all of this stuff marching up to Darwin in the March of Death, like the longest march you'll ever see out of Alice Springs. Uh, hopefully some of that's motorized out there. Well, some of it is. We know that. But um, moving a few things down to Palembang, which might be important considering he is bombing Palembang. Now, really... I almost don't like to defend Palembang in the air. If he wants to destroy his own future oil production, I'm okay with that. Uh, or oil fuel, I should say fuel eventually, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, ground combat up here near Patau. Uh, okay, we had a nice little group here, 5,000 men. We had a better assault value. Uh, he's just bombarding at this point. Uh, ground combat, bombardment again. This is near Pakoi. Uh, we're trying to get back over here. Uh, I can't remember. Were we trying to bring them down here? Now, he's probably going to get isolated. That's not great. Uh, we should back off here. Now, I was trying to help him by crossing over into Indochina so that this would activate. But screw that. If he's going to come after this, I'm going to go right back to that base. Um, they've now... Uh, Captured Batangis. You may find that unbelievable, but finally, after all that battling, uh, they've taken Batangis, a shock attack. Now, those were those retreating troops. My God, what a terrible, horrible retreat. That must have been through the jungle with 800, 900 men, and you've got almost 13,000 Japanese men in pursuit. 303 to 4 on the adjusted defense. Uh, yeah. Um, they destroyed the aircraft that were still on the ground. We had no chance to get those out. They had 73 casualties. Uh, looks like we essentially surrendered 674. Uh, well, I say I wish they destroyed those. I mean, that's okay. I, I would imagine those men tried to throw up their hands, uh, but no, no work there. Uh, ground combat at Clark Field. These are the big ones. Japanese deliberate attack. Okay, so he's he's kind of hedging his bets a little bit here. 8,700 troops. We've got almost 18,000. Much better assault value. And you see the adjusted defense because we've been sitting here building fort level uh, assault odds here. 1 to 29. He only took 28 casualties. That is a good thing. Uh, or it's why you want to have good commanders, essentially, so you can back up when it doesn't look good. We did destroy 30 vehicles. Uh, who knows what those are? Um, he's got engineers, brigades here, medium tank, you know, medium field artillery, 14th Army, uh, heavy artillery. Okay, he's got a lot of different things there. 
uh, but he's been repulsed in his first attempt at Clark Field. Uh, Ternate surrenders, no surprise there. We had 88 troops out there. Well, okay, they threw up their hands. Uh, was not pleasant being a Japanese POW during World War II, those poor souls. Um... All right, Lashio's expanded, moving oil and resources. So it looks like that's it. I'm actually quite surprised. He's being very docile. In, I say he, the little men in the machine, the AI, is being very docile in China, I feel like. Now, that maybe won't last. You know, I was also saying, I'm surprised he's not down at Rabal yet. Well, here he is, and he sank uh, four cargo ship or three cargo ships and their escort this time uh we'll go look at those points here in just a second because I, I i also want to make sure i don't forget to turn that transport around it's just too late i was gonna do it i gave in to the mob i'm kidding but i gave in to you guys and said okay i'll reinforce rabal a little bit even though i usually just give it up to the ai for the most part so that the ai keeps working properly uh it makes for a lot more fun game than when the ai is going haywire um and it, really if he sends any kind of force whether it be a human or ai he's going to take it uh we've got a lot of things arriving here oh great these guys are like thanks for sending us into singapore uh, we've got a lot of new air units in the eastern U.S. We'll have to go check those out. You see all of those squads coming in, uh, reassigning transport. You know, we're going through all of the end here. Save the game, and we pop over to... Come on! Come on, baby! Come on! Let's see Pearl Harbor. There it is! January 4th, 1942. Let's go up to the uh, intelligence report. Let's see, ship sunk. Yeah, last turn. Okay, uh, we're showing that we did get that sub. That was eight points. Uh, the cargo ships were all fives. The PG was Australian. It was a two, so we lost three British five-point cargo ships. That's okay. That's okay. It was worth trying to get some supply up in there. Uh, this this is the kind of stuff you just you're gonna lose some of it. You just are. You know, I, I would love it if the game went perfectly and the Allies never took any losses. But sometimes you got to take a little chance. You know, I didn't expect them to get there quite that fast, or didn't really know their strength. Uh, so we lost a few British cargo ships. That's not you know, we don't want to, uh, but you're going to every once in a while. Um, if we look down here, this held fairly constant, 11, 4, 22, 44, 83. Uh, we'll go through all of this stuff next time uh, when it's the January 4th turn. I've got a lot of stuff to do offline here uh, because we I've got to look at the whole western part of the map, really got to dig around in China. I'll see what's interesting and make sure that I put that in the next episode. Anyway, thank you so much. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.